So after yesterday's video <laughs> that, that I watched a little of because someone asked me a question about it, there's something that I want to kind of dive in a little bit more and revisit. And that is the nature of our shadow. I think it's very easy to oversimplify and call our shadow selves bad, negative, dark, right? Because if, if you think of them in terms of the opposite of our light aspects, how can they not be the dark aspects or the, the more shameful aspects of our personality? I'm here to tell you that it's not bad. It's a different dimension of them, but the, it is not bad and good. It's not that kind of a value scale. And if you spend all your time in the light, your circle's very small. You need to be able to travel that gamut to have the full effect of your lifetime. So the idea is that the razor's edge of contentment is bringing the light and dark to a single point. Now, I am extremely bad at staying at that point. It is my feet are bloody standing on that razor's edge. I am much better at being either in ecstasy or in devastation. Those are actually much more natural states for me. And that comes from my own conditioning of if you're not feeling it the most, you're not feeling it at all. And what I am trying to learn and coming to learn is that that center point is actually the creative cohabitation of those things and the, the fulcrum point, like the, the place where they manifest and, and bring out the best in each other, not the dilution of or less emotion, right? I, I think of, I used to think of contentment as um, not boring, but like a baseline. So you're content. So no, content is so complex. It's, it's the ability to not be in trigger all the time. It's the ability to self-regulate. I mean, it's, it's, and it's a way to be really productive because you're, you're steady and you're solid. You're not swinging from side to side, right? So it gives you a place of real strength and stability. And you, you're actually able to feel things even deeper because they are regulated. So, but what I, but I really wanted to focus on today is the fact that when we think of shadow, our mind immediately goes to the negative side of an emotion, right? Happy, sad, but that's not the case. The shadow side is much subtler than that, which is why it needs to be acknowledged or it will come out in other ways. And the other thing that I touched on that I want to really bring forth is that when the shadow comes out, we don't always know that that's happening. And so it may manifest itself in getting sick. It may manifest itself in just stupid arguments with someone else as you project. You don't, you're not aware that you're doing it, but because it doesn't, it finds a way, it finds a way to come out. So the more conscious you can be about allowing that a space to come out, obviously the less detrimental to yourself and to the people around you and, and, and your own health for sure. So I just want you to understand the subtlety of shadow as opposed to opposite. For example, let's look at an, an emotion that takes place within relationship. Devotion, right? So you are in a committed monogamous relationship and you feel really good about the fact that your partner and you are exclusive, right? Where is the line between exclusivity and codependence or enmeshing or obsession, right? So healthy is you've both decided to be monogamous and only with each other. And the beauty of really being intimate and truthful and open and discovering all those beautiful things that come to a trusting, intimate relationship that way. But it's very easy to slip over into the shadow side of that same exclusive relationship, which is you get wound into their personality, not just their lives, you get wound into their personality. They like they become the center of your thoughts or even as a couple, your energies become so enmeshed that you lose a little bit of yourself. 
So where is that line? That's exactly what I mean, right? So those are not necessarily bad things if you are aware of them, if you're giving them voice, if you are allowing them to speak into your life and you're not suppressing them. No, everything's fine. We're fine. This is great. Because then it will get poisonous and either a partner may get really needy, a partner may withdraw completely in reaction to this, this intimacy instead of saying, wow, this is really intense. Here's what I'm dealing with. Let's look at this together, right? Because that's really being real and raw and that's really being intimate. So that what I just wanted to cover today is it's so easy to think of the dark as the bad. There's gold in the dark because when you are able to bring that shadow forth, first of all, you see that it's, it's very similar to that same expression of the fear of the fear is, is greater than the fear of the actual thing. When it is brought into the light, you see it's not really something to be fearful of but it is something to be aware of because the unconscious shadow can be super destructive both to yourself and in, in, in relationship. So I hope that maybe clarified some things today, but I just want you to look inside at something that you would consider automatically kind of shadow. Now look at that behavior, look at it consciously, give it voice, write about it, speak it out. Is it all bad? Or is there a reason that it's come up for you? And what is that reason? Because again, the shadow always has light within it. That's what makes it shadow. And I hope this kind of just draws a little bit more definition to that idea and that concept. And I will see you tomorrow.